SoFi stock's down 21%. There are three rumors being spread around the stock and it's not looking very pretty. I want to separate for you facts from fiction so you are better informed. You know what to do with your shares plus my stock price prediction and how we can make money out of this now. That's what we're here for, isn't it? So let's jump straight to, into it here. Felix here, an uh, old banker, hoping to um, make you into a better investor got three things for you for free before we get cracking. Full Nasdaq benchmark. You can download this for free. Felixfriends.org slash Nasdaq. What do I mean by that? It's this document here. For every Nasdaq company out there, you've got gross profit margins, operating income margin, return invested capital, like my favorite metric ever. Uh, PE ratios, forward PE ratios, long-term earnings growth, all the good stuff. And you can filter this and mess with it and set some variables and find some, some good stocks here. So, get your pause on that. Uh, we've done another one as well, because some of you were asking for tech stocks. Uh, this is the ARK ETF, essentially, everything that's in there. Again, you know, you can see all the metrics, so felixfriends.org slash ARK. I'll put the links down below, or just take a screenshot of it and then open it, open them afterwards, or use the fancy QR code if you're so minded. And of course, most importantly, I always encourage everybody to trade without emotion and only with rules, and I'm giving you the rules. So tomorrow, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern time, I will teach 500 people the rules by which we automate entry, automate exit, automate profit taking, risk management, all of it. So you can just spend less than an hour a day trading, continue your day job, whatever it is that you do, and potentially generate a really, really nice extra income. It's the simplest thing we've ever done. We trade only one stock, 75% win ratio. So come and join me, felixrenz.org slash webinar, and uh, you can ask me lots of difficult questions too. So if you enjoy torturing old bankers, then uh, that's another fun thing to do. Now, the first issue with SoFi is that it is literally the most shorted mid-cap stock out there. Um, it has a score of 99 out of 99 in terms of being shorted. Um, it's basically in the same, more shorter than Lucid. <laughs> or, um, you know, Bisca is in a similar space, but it's a smaller company. So that's fairly shocking. And you could think, well, maybe the peep market is just really against fintechs or really against SoFi. And then you watch Anthony Noto on CNBC saying, well, we get our customers by stealing them from the big banks. And then you're starting to think, well, maybe Wall Street doesn't really like that, right? Is that a possibility? I'm not throwing any accusations around, but uh, it is a possibility, I would say. So huge short interest. Um, and what does that mean? Well, it's a bit like you come up for air after diving and then someone hits you over the head with a hammer every time. You just keep going under and under and under, and um, they keep drowning you. Except at some point, you could get a really, really nice short squeeze and the stock could really catapult up, but you'd need some big news, like, you know, big profitability, that sort of thing. That's item number one. That's more for like, general caution awareness out there. And it just says, you know, the securities are graded on a scale of one to 99, 99 representing the security. There's the highest percentage of funds that are shorting it. So yeah, it's being shorted the funds out of. That was a politer way of saying the other F word. Um, second myth is that insiders are selling massively one of the reasons the stock's down 21% last week. And it's really this red little blob here, those sales uh, that we're seeing there. We saw a similar thing at the beginning of this year. We saw a similar thing in November 2021. Um, some insiders selling. So who's selling? Well, the president of SoFi Bank, Chad, the chief risk officer, Aaron, and the CMO, Lauren, they all sold about together about $3 million worth of shares. Three days later, Anthony Noto the Great steps in and buys $300,000 of shares and, and, and the CFO buys $100,000 of shares, probably to offset some of the damage done by, by those headlines. But why are these guys selling? Well, they get paid in share options. So in September, Lauren got 93,000 shares. And then she sold, how many did she sell? 
and thirty five thousand, she sold a bit more. So you know, she bought a new car, a new house, a new husband, um, third third plane. Uh, you know, who who knows? Uh, and the same is is true for everybody else who he was selling here. Uh, president of SoFi Bank, you know, he was getting also options in in September. So what you have to realize is a lot of these guys get most of their salary essentially in options, and they might have something they want to buy the house, the mistress, the boat, the plane, you know, the helicopter, that sort of thing. Uh, there are real problems in the C-suite. If you, if you, you know, don't keep up with a private jet of the neighbors, then, you know, you might not get invited to, um, you know, the local cookout or, or whatever it is that they get up to <laughs> in, in their residences. So there are many reasons for which people sell stocks. There is only one reason people buy because they think it's going to go up. So if Anthony Noto started selling hand over fist, I'd get worried about that. But Anthony Noto has bought something like $13 million worth of shares in, in, in SoFi, in addition to the share options he gets. And we're going to get into that in a moment. Now, he bought those shares and then people were saying, yeah, but hang on, uh, Noto got paid $100 million in 2021. So he's spending 300K on the stock price. Uh, well, this is nothing. This means nothing. Well, it's nonsense. Um, there's a Twitter channel I want to give a huge shout out to. You guys should follow them. Data D Investing. Fantastic guy. Does really, really great research. So I just screenshot it here to give credit where credit's due. And he's saying um, that, yeah, 300K of share buys is chump change. Noto got paid 103 million. And that isn't true. Noto won't see a penny of 90% of that compensation unless the stock quadruples in the next two and a half years. He's got some serious incentive to make the share price go up. So 94%, 94 million out of his pay is performance stock units, which means the share price has to go up. So he basically doesn't get anything unless the share price goes above $25 by the summer of 2026. He's got a serious interest to get SoFi stock up to 25 million. He's got a $94 million interest to do that. Uh, so he gets his, a third of his shares at $25. He gets a third at $35 and the last third at $45 stock price. That's a, actually a fantastic, glorious, brilliant deal for shareholders. Every CEO should be compensated like this maybe build in a longer term incentive as well. So, you know, we got to go 4x here <laughs> for him to get paid. Uh, so at least, or 7x if you, you know, you want to get the full full amount here. So, you know, here you got the screenshot of the PSUs here. Um, 6.4 million shares there. So yeah, he's got a lot of money. But as, as he also reminds us here, he, Noto has paid $13.5 million in stock on the open market. So he's not just relying on his stock options, he's actually buying there. So I think it's just uninformed nitwits. Now, then there is the rumor that since the earnings has been going around, SoFi is dishonest on its loan sales. So what do banks do? Well, they lend you money. Say you buy a house, they lend you money for the mortgage, and then you're going to pay every month, you know, X thousands of dollars to the bank. The bank can sell the right to get these loan repayments off you and a couple of thousand other people, bundle it together, and they can sell that bundle on to another bank or another fund. And that way it goes off their balance sheet, and that way they got their cash free again, and they can they can do it again. And it's a it's a decent thing to do. Now, in the earnings call, they were telling us that they were selling loans at 105% of face value, which is way above market price. So it's worth 5% more than it really is, which would be very, very profitable. And everybody's then saying that this 5% gain was made up and it was some sort of accounting scandal because it's showing in the accounts. This is going to get a little technical here for 30 seconds, but I'll walk you through it. It shows up under servicing assets recognized. And you're like, what? What does that mean? Well, essentially, what happens is that 
actually, let's run through this example. This is a good one. This is easier to explain. So here's a real world example he runs us through, which is very nice. So say you lend $200 to your friend Joe. He's going to pay you $20 a month for a year. So you get back $240. So you make, made $40 profit on the loan, right? And you then go to your other friend, Jill, and tell her that if she pays you $200 now, you pay her $19 a month for the next year. So you're paying $228. Um, and essentially, what that means is you now have your $200 back, and every month Joe pays you, you pocket one extra dollar and you go for the remaining 19 to Jill. So that's essentially what they've done. They've sold the loan, but they're still collecting the money from their customers. So that's the servicing part, that extra dollar. And as long as you, your clients keep paying you, you get your original 200 back and you're making a profit, right? It's a, it's a pretty smart setup. So this isn't some fancy kind of accounting shenanigans or cooking the books. It's just the way it's structured. Very, very simple deal, fairly common. And what they said in the earnings call is completely rational and normal and justified. It's just a bunch of people who understand half of it who are shouting off the top of the hill. Now, facts are facts. One of my favorite sentences It's how you win every argument, by the way. If you just someone says something, you just go facts are facts. <laughs> So what have we got on this glorious colorful chart? Well, in red is the stock price. This is stock price. And then you've got EBITDA here, which I'm not a huge fan of, by the way, but it's a, it's a profit me measure. And then up here, you've got revenue. So you've got to ask yourself, sorry about the writing there, it's a little hard to read. If people were buying SoFi up here, yeah, okay, they're probably overpaid. Let's face it, they're probably overpaid. Um, but, you know, now that we are down here with the stock price and everything else has improved, how does this make sense? So the fundamentals have gotten a lot better. The stock price has come down a lot, which is usually a fairly good position to be in. Of course, this is some financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy it and so on. And I want to focus on these big three items here. Price prediction, support and how to trade it. So let's pop open a bottle of Dom Perignon or whatever the guys were buying with all those shares they were selling. And do you like champagne? I don't actually like champagne. Don't really get it. Weirdly fermented taste makes you smell of rotten cabbage afterwards. Have you noticed that? People drink champagne, you smell. I don't really get it. Um, and I get on a plane and it gives you champagne glass as well. If you fly first off, business or private. Uh, I know, embarrassing. Uh, but, um, and I never want the stuff. And they're always like, what? And there's someone next to me, like, necking the stuff down. Like, it's going out of business. I don't really get it. And then um, you come off the plane and you're like hungover and half drunk. Two of them, uh, I don't get it. Anyway, so what, what have we got here? Well, this is the um, SoFi stock chart. And you see these two purple lines I've drawn, drawn in here. Well, we're at the bottom end of that thing, right? So we had you know, this one here, that one there, we bounced off here again, we bounced off here again. So we keep going down in this channel. And then on the top end, a uh, similar story, you know, we bounce off here, we bounce off there, we bounce off there. So the, the logic would therefore be that, you know, we're going to do this again. And then the question is, do we bounce off it? In which case we turn bearish again, or is there a chance that we bounce through it and exceed the previous peak here at sort of 850. Um, at the moment, it just looks like a falling knife and we're below every moving average. The yellow one's the 50, the purple one here is the uh, 200. And I always say nothing good happens below the 200 day moving average line. And I think that's very much the case here. So the question is, well, where is our support? We're trading below $7. How can you look up the support? Well, you can go to optionswatch.io you type in SoFi. This is a platform that we are developing, me with one of my um, students, who's a brilliant guy. And um, we're just making trading and data access easier and accessible and affordable so everybody can become better at what they do. So this is now SoFi. And sign up for the free trial, by the way, and then you get access to these 
bars, these green and red bars. This is where the call options are. So the biggest red bar is your call wall. It's the support for the stock. And it sits at $6 very clearly. So $6 is support for us. If we go out a month, it's always the third Friday of the month that we care about in the options market. You see the support is actually still at 750, but it's slipping towards six and five. So you want to watch this and see that if this 750 moves down to six, that's bearish. It goes to show that the whole market is just shifting a little bit down here. So watch out for those. And then resistance here would be at nine or 10. That would be the green lines for next week, $9. So that would be your resistance. I think we have a little less to worry about that for now. So the setup's fairly, fairly bearish. And then now you know these support lines. How can you make money out of this? Well, the similar trade that I've got open is somewhere down here. I set this up last week. So um, we've got a little bit more money for it perhaps than you did. But it has a 79% chance of making money. And obviously don't set this up with real money if you don't know what you're doing and so on. And we can make a 13% profit and our break even is below $6, $5.89 in fact. And that's quite glorious. So we've got the ability, you know, if we're at $5.89, if we are here, let's make that different color. Um, whoops. Yellow line, see that yellow line here? That's where our trade's positioned. So therefore the stock could go down up to that level, or it can go up in either way we make money. And that's the glory. That's how you get to that 80% probability or 79% probability rather than the 50-50 coin toss, a coin toss, uh, <laughs> coin toss, struggling with the words today. Uh, so we know the price prediction now. Well, do we? Well, essentially, you want to watch out that it doesn't go below this channel here. Um, we'd like to climb back above $7. And then the real resistance will sit somewhere up here in the high $7. That will be our path down. And then we break through that. You get to $8, $8.50. You get to $8.50 and it's a technical buy. That's the way I, I would look at this. Um, how to trade it. We just looked at that. So yeah, it's just a lot of stuff being thrown at the stock. I think fairly unfairly. I think they've done a really amazing job. Uh, so look, if you're frustrated with stocks, literally learn how to trade in a really rules-based system. No more worrying, should I take the profit? Should I exit? Should I wait? What do I do now? None of that. We just completely automate the whole thing. And it's more fun. It takes very little time. Anybody can do it. Come and join me on Tuesday, Felix Renzelog slash webinar. And be part of our clan, our mission. We want to make a million people financially free. That's really what this is all about. And um, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. And I'd love for you to be part of it. Felix Friends at slash webinar. Sign up for it. Links down below. I thank you for watching and tuning in and, you know, smash the you know what and hope to see you on the next one.